I had heard even your current husband, yes. your husband in real life, yes. I should say, <laughs> has a little cameo. He in does. This. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a cameo. It's so funny. Like, yeah. So the producers basically, one of you know, Daisy kind of has these random nights with different men and right. and moments, and and they kind of said, you know, we thought it would be funny if your husband would play this kind of like one night stand guy. And, <laughs> and so it was very funny. That sounds like a natural thing, but was that awkward? It, it, was, <laughs> it was weirdly very awkward. It was more <laughs> awkward than I would have anticipated. And really? I, I, I don't know why, but I think like, I don't know. It was like, typically I don't get uncomfortable with intimate scenes or sex scenes. Like I've, I've done a lot of them in my yeah. <laughs> career. Um, but not with your husband. But not with my husband. <laughs> And so it was like, yeah, it was like weirdly funny and awkward and we were both kind of giggling like kids and just uncomfortable <laughs> and, and like, yeah, I, I won't get into the details, but it was very funny. Hey! When are you gonna grow the fuck up? Hopefully never. When are you gonna stop being a fucking liar? What am I lying about now? Your whole fucking life is a fucking lie. I mean, did you thing fucking hear the shit that comes out of your mouth, man? Like, did you fucking hear yourself back there? I fucking know you, and you know I do, and that's what fucking scares you, huh? You think I'm full of shit? I do. You think I'm full of shit? I do. Me, huh? Yeah? What about you, huh? What, what about you and Nikki? What about it? Well, you want me to believe that that's real, that you're happy, that you're in love? Well, I am happy, and I am in love. Oh, come on. I know you too, Daisy. You don't know a goddamn thing. I know what it looks like when you're in love with someone. Welcome to the actor's side. She has done so many terrific performances in her relatively uh, young career so far. One that I absolutely loved, American Honey. Um, and beyond that, Mad Max, Fury Road, you can't get better than that. Uh, Devil All the Time. Uh, the Girlfriend of Experience, of course, you know her from all things. And now, Daisy Jones and the Six. And man, if you haven't seen that show, you've got to welcome Riley Keough Thank to the you. actor's Thanks side. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Everybody knows you're the granddaughter of Elvis Presley yeah. and daughter of Lisa Marie Presley and had that a whole family thing. And think of music. And the thing is, you got this job in Daisy Jones and the Six freaking out because you didn't know if you could sing. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I know. I think people have a hard time wrapping their head around that. But, but it's true. I really could not sing <laughs> prior. Well, take me through that because this is really, I'm not just saying this either. I, you know, sometimes I watch one or two episodes and do an interview or something. You know, I watched absolutely every Aww. last episode. I can't wait for the sequel. I know there's got to be so. one. I hope so. I know people keep asking, but I think we haven't heard anything yet, so. Yeah. I don't know, fingers crossed. But yeah, so I got the, the script and uh, basically met with Hello Sunshine and one of the things that Daisy, whoever was to play Daisy needed to do, obviously, was to be able to sing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I think for a while they were considering having professional singers um, that they could teach, they to, could act. teach to act <laughs> and then um, at some point I think they started considering actors who maybe have a little bit a uh, little bit of singing background or I don't really know what their thought was there but I basically got the uh, the script and talked to my agent and and she said you know well you have to be able to sing for this and there was just something in me at the time that really wanted to there's something about the project that felt very fun and joyful to me um, and I have done a lot of kind of more serious like darker material I'll, and I'll say and I've I, seen a lot of that <laughs> yeah and so I was very like excited by the opportunity to do something that felt very entertaining and and yeah. obviously there's moments in the show that are you know heavy but for the most part it was you know the opportunity to be in this world and and you know 1970s rock and roll for me I don't know I feel like for everybody is just this sort of like time that was so um, romantic and, and wild and and uh, aesthetically. Did you base her on any particular person? Like I just saw at um, 
the uh, SoFi Stadium, I saw Stevie Nicks yeah. like a few weeks ago. Yeah. And she's in her 70s now or something and still And she's has incredible. It. I know. I mean, just amazing. Did you like base it on somebody like her or? So Stevie was definitely very heavily referenced um, <laughs> in the room and with the writers and everything. Um, but what I mostly did was I just wanted to watch kind of all of the footage that I could find from female singers at the time. Um, and I watched I watched Joni Mitchell, I watched Stevie, I watched, like any, anybody, I, I kind of would go on YouTube and just like let the algorithm happen. <laughs> and uh, just hundreds of hours of watching stage performances. And something that I noticed that was interesting was that a lot of the, the female singers at the time were, there wasn't a lot of freedom in their movement. It wasn't like extremely liberated in that way for women per performers. Right. There were moments where Stevie would kind of move around on stage and the, the kind of only other person I could really find was Janis Joplin, who would kind of right. feel free in her body. So for me, uh, it, it was less about one person and more about trying to figure out who Daisy was and getting little bits and pieces from all kinds of um, things I would watch. And a, a, a big thing for me was trying to stay um, trying to stay true to the time in terms of like movement, which was really a lot harder than I would have <laughs> anticipated. And yeah in the way she moved in general, but also her dancing, because, yeah. you know, instinctually, if I'm to dance, it's going to be like a more modern <laughs> kind of thing. So that was really fun. That was so authentic, the yeah. way you did that. I just see them during that time yeah. doing that. Yeah. 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 The so way you move on stage and everything. I mean, you make it seem effortless, but you obviously put, put so a lot much of work, work in. <laughs> a lot of work, I know, even I, into the audition process. Yes. You had to prove to them. Yeah. So I did yeah. like a little voice recording, and I was singing kind of softly because I I knew that I had like I could carry a tune, you know, yeah. but I didn't have any idea how to project my voice or. You know, one of the requirements was that she needed to belt and sing loudly, and that was just something I like literally had no idea how to make my voice do. So I yeah. went to a vocal coach for a few days, and I was just really determined to to try my hardest to um, <laughs> prove to them that I could, you know, they could work with me. And they did really take a chance, I, I have to say, <laughs> <laughs> um, in casting me because the beginning I was not a great, I was not a very great strong singer. Was there any talk of dubbing your yeah, singing? There was. There was a lot of conversations in the beginning about, um, you know, um, what we might have to do if I can't sing all the songs. Um, mm -hmm. They were confident in a certain range in my voice, and I think there were areas where I wasn't as strong. And so there were conversations about stunt vocalists and using, trying to mash my voice with somebody else's and, right. and all of that. And what ended up happening is because of the pandemic, what was meant to be like a two month rehearsal period ended up being like a year. Wow. Yeah. Pandemic worked out for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, so I had like a year of rigorous uh, vocal training and guitar uh, lessons and piano lessons. So, wow. Yeah. Because when I watched it cold, I'm going like, is that really her? Yeah. Because you are good. Thank you. <laughs> it's me and like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't do a lot of manipulation with our vocals because they wanted yeah. it to be, you know, authentic. So there's not like a lot of like auto tune or anything like that, which yeah, is. Proof positive. <laughs> you, got a, you got a hit record going totally. up the charts. The uh, yeah. soundtrack, Aurora, <laughs> yeah. is like, you know, people are buying it. I know. I mean, it's like the, I mean, the songwriters on the record are so incredible that that makes sense to me. But the part that totally doesn't make sense is that I'm singing on it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, here we are. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's in the family, yeah. you know, music, clearly, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, were people surprised in your life that you really were one to act? That was the, you didn't want to sing. Yeah. yeah. I, I think as far back as I can remember, I shared with my family that I wanted to act and direct as well. That was kind of like my thing as a kid. I would like get my friends together and make little movies. So I, I don't remember them having any resistance. I think that because we grew up in Los Angeles, my parents were nervous about like the rejection part right. of the industry and how that might uh, be for me. But they, they were pretty supportive. And yeah, it, it, my whole family are musicians. So I was, I was, uh, the only actor. Yeah, <laughs> although I think you sort of got the acting gene uh, from your grandparents. Yes. Um, well, my grandparents, yes, both acted. Both mm -hmm. actors, and I mean, if you've seen movies like King Creole, yes. Elvis was never got the due he yeah. has 
He's a natural actor, I think. He, he was. I, b I believe you're right. And I feel like if he had, you know, I think he, he was always wanting to do sort of more serious uh, acting performances. And I think that, yeah. you know, I, that he was a fantastic performer and actor. You know, Daisy Jones uh, has a lot to say about fame. Yeah. I mean, they're dealing with this <laughs> emerging fame and how it's splitting them apart and all the drama with that and addiction. I mm -hmm. thought very interesting kinds of things brought up in this series. Yeah, I mean, it, it is an interesting thing. Like, that seems to be something that happens often with performers, you know, right. and, and I'm not sure what that is, but there's certainly a lot of addiction in, in rock and roll and in music and something I'm definitely familiar with. Yeah, so playing that part of it, of, of Daisy's character, um, was that tough to do or how did you approach that part of this role? Well, it was something for me that I've had experience with mm -hmm. and I, what was important to me was to, and I spoke to the writers about this, was to, to make sure that those moments did have weight and that it wasn't glamorized. And I think there's like a glamorization with 70s addiction and drug right. use and stuff and so that was kind of my my all these musicians who died at age 27 it was kind of a weird thing you know going super weird <laughs> but, but what was interesting is that you know we, we sat with like addiction specialists who had experience from that time and the lack of awareness of addiction right. was you know it was so different so that was also something that we had to understand as the performers that Sam and I is that there wasn't uh, a lot of knowledge about you know addiction wasn't it wasn't really a, a, a thing, you know, mm. as, or, or people weren't aware of it. So it was just, um, you know, you, you, you like to party or whatever, you know. So mm. wrapping our heads around like what, what the mindset would have been or if you would have, if, if Daisy or Billy would have been aware that they have a problem or if it's just kind of typical rock star behavior. And, you know, she starts off basically as a kid <laughs> and then progressively <laughs> matures and the way the structure of the uh, show is you know she's being interviewed years later yeah. and so there's a chance for you to really show the range of age in yeah. this character here which it must have been great for you to yeah, do. Yeah I think that's something I really <laughs> love about limited series and TV in general is you get like a lot of time to develop characters whereas in right. film you have like five scenes or ten <laughs> scenes and you're like okay I need to like really portray this person in these moments but yeah. in TV you get to spend so much time and with Daisy like you know, from teen years to, to the sort of older 40s interview yeah. thing. So it was like, a, it was very fun to, to um, try and keep a consistency, but also allow her to change. And the different, the different hair, yeah. uh, costumes, yeah. that whole thing. How yeah. does that help you once they put you in yeah. that? <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. Like, I don't know how to like verbalize it, but it really helps for me, costume yeah. and hair and makeup. It's like, you just, you, for me anyways, like I feel like a different person when I'm in, in wardrobe and, and costume and stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's a big part of it for me. And, yeah. and, uh, uh, I thought you and Sam Claflin were so great together. The chemistry was clearly <laughs> there on and off and you'd never know where this is gonna go. Yeah. But it's totally believable. Did you have much rehearsal time or how did you <laughs> develop that between the two of you? It's funny, we actually had no acting rehearsal time at all, but wow. we had <laughs> months of band rehearsal together. So uh. <laughs> with Sam and I and the whole band, we had like months in band practice all day. So we had, you know, we actually had more time than I've ever spent with my fellow uh, performers and uh. just like sitting in a rehearsal space all day, having lunch together, like playing music. And so we got, to develop like a very strong friendship before shooting, which was very cool. As an actor, I mentioned American Honey, which I, Andrea Arnold directed, yeah. and I am just a huge fan of that movie. Yeah. And I thought you were so good. I Thank mean, you. unrecognizable Thank in you. so many ways. And I, you know, when you work in an independent movie like that, you got nominated for any Spirit Awards yeah. and things. Yeah. Is that what attracts you as an actor to really get into this kind of character work and thing? Yeah, I think like, Anytime I get the opportunity to do something I haven't done yet right. is always exciting to me. And then if that's paired with like an incredible filmmaker, it's obviously like such a great opportunity. I think with Andrea, I was such a big fan of hers. And that was another one where I auditioned so many times actually <laughs> um, because she didn't know which role I was right for and she kind of didn't know if I fit into the crew she was creating and I kept like writing them and being like, well, let me just read one more time. Like, I'll, tr I'll try a different character or I'll try, you know? 
and yeah. and then ultimately she gave up and cast me. Oh, that was a hell of a <laughs> role. That was a great role. It I really mean, was. you know, and then to do Mad Max Fury Road to get into that universe. Yeah, yeah. Had to be like a trip. I, I mean, that was like I think probably one of the most memorable times of my life. Certainly, like that was a very pivotal and beautiful experience for all of us, and difficult and very difficult. Was it? Yeah, it was. It was. You know, I mean, we were working very long days, and and we were out in the middle of the desert, and just the conditions, and and uh, yeah, it was it was very, very challenging. But um, I made you know a lot of very close friends and long life friends, and my husband there. So that's cool. And George, <laughs> George, and George Miller, oh my gosh, isn't he amazing? And you know, that went on to be nominated for ten Oscars, one six. I'll tell you, none of us anticipated that. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> We were in the desert, and there was a point in this during the shoot when it was just getting crazy, and we were shooting on two units, and it was like we were popping over to one unit and then going to the other unit, and none of us could keep up with what's going on because he, the way he thinks and works is so incredible. Like we couldn't grasp entirely what he was doing, <laughs> and we were. I remember just sitting in a car or being outside of a car or the the truck, uh, the rig, and they just would like throw us in and be like, okay, now you know, there's an explosion and we had no context and we're like, okay, like, yeah. so react to go, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I think that we were all very surprised, not surprised, but, you know, because George is like a, one of the most genius uh, people I've ever met or worked with, but I think that the Oscar recognition for that type of movie seemed, uh, you know. It's unheard of. I yeah. mean, the previous Mad Max movies yeah. got a grand total of zero Oscar right. nominations between them. Yeah. And then this one comes along, I guess, you know, the right time, people recognize what he's actually doing now. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think in that, in that kind of world or with those types of films, I think that was a very um, uh, singular, special, uh, genius Movie. And working with like George Miller, Andrea Arnold, and Steven Soderbergh yeah. is another one. You've worked several times yeah. with him. Of course, the girlfriend experience yeah. was, I think, a huge breakout yeah. role, obviously, for you. Yeah, Steven is, Steven, I, I, I owe a part of, I mean, half of my career success, I think, I owe to Steven. He's really, like, <laughs> helped me out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's an interesting director too, yeah. in that how he shoots and the way he shoots, and almost, almost like with a phone. It, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's amazing. Like, he's 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 incredible to work with. He's also like an incredible person. You know, when I was making my film, he was so helpful, and I could just pick up the phone and call him and ask him questions. And um, he's just like a very very supportive of young filmmakers and, and experimental. You know, he still has that um, that excitement in him which is, is really inspiring oh yeah no he's <laughs> he's the real deal yeah. i'm asking all this because you have become a director yeah not just a director i was in can you uh, were oh i was there okay uh an uncertain regard <laughs> yeah. um war pony which is yeah. a terrific movie really interesting film Thanks. and it won the camera door oh, no. which is across all the competitions in can it's still it's like the, the first craziest film. thing i've ever experienced you won <laughs> with your co-director yeah that's a big deal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know. It's so crazy. I still haven't totally wrapped my mind around it, but <laughs> I was actually filming Daisy Jones when we heard that we got into Cannes, and I think that we were not expecting to get in. We got in very last minute, and right. we kind of thought, you know, I, well, we haven't heard yet, so we probably didn't get in, but also... There was a part of us that was like, oh, we're never going to get into Can. It's Can, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then we got in, and I was standing up in my trailer, and... We, I got this email and my co-director Gina, we got it at the same time to our inbox and it was like, congratulations, you know, your film, et cetera. Wow. And I like thought I was going to faint. I, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is a, a mistake and <laughs> like, there's no way. And I just sat down for a minute and it was like totally mind blowing. And then to win was even crazier. So it's just like, I can't. Yeah, and that was not just an uncertain regard. That's for any movie in any competition for a, a first time director. Yeah. Um, extraordinary yeah. and that movie was Thank really you. unique I mean you know in the making of it yeah. Native uh, Americans and all that it was about yeah how did you just come upon that uh, yeah. to make that film well it it started with myself and Gina my co writer and director and um, our two friends Franklin and Bill who were from Pine Ridge right. and it was kind of like we didn't we didn't have a, a plan when we met. We had a we became friends. Um, I actually met them during American Honey, 
yeah. we were shooting in um, South Dakota and I became friends with them and they lived in the area and we just like started yeah we we had a friendship and so it was really this friendship that turned into this sort of like artistic collaboration because we were all in our early 20s and they were very interested like Frank was very into making music videos at the time and Gina and I were like messing around with VR at the time when it came out and and just kind of we would hang out but also do these like experimental um, videos and, and movies wow. and then we started writing together all four of us um, and then you know we it became more serious and then we started writing it's, the screenplay. It's amazing the authenticity of it. Yeah well that's from the boys you know they're yeah. they're um, they're it's their stories and you know their voices and the other thing that we did was we would you know one of the things that I feel very proud of with our performers is that it was entirely on book and there wasn't any um, improv and it feels like improvisational but they were just very wonderful at learning their lines and, and yeah, very natural very natural yeah it seemed like that yeah and so we would kind of like take we would we would take a scene and then we would we would have the actors um, rehearse it and then we would allow them to improv and then they would change their lines to uh, dialogue that felt uh, natural to them and then we would go back and rewrite the scenes and then that would that's how we kind of would wow work so has things. this like do you have more movies you're gonna mm -hmm. now we have do <laughs> we have um, there's a film we started writing um, uh, I. I can't write when I am not very inspired to write. Like I can't just sit down and, and right. be like, I'm okay, I'm gonna write right now. I'm not, yeah. my mind doesn't work that way, but we are slowly but surely writing a second film. Uh, uh, no, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in another limited series, speaking yes. back to television. Yes, uh, Under is the it for Bridge. for Hulu, right? Yeah, for Hulu. Um, uh, Under the Bridge. Yes, yeah. it is a, a, a true story that took place in Victoria. And, uh, BC in the 90s, and we're we're doing that right now with Hulu in Vancouver. Oh, really? Yeah. When are we going to see that one? We don't have a date yet, <laughs> but soon. We're I'm not wrapped. I've been I have like another week and a half on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. This is like uh, exciting times. Yeah, huh? it's, it's very, it is. It is. <laughs> well, Daisy Jones and the Six. If you haven't seen it, you will become addicted, like me. And. <laughs> I don't the record. Uh, oh, yeah, I have the record. <laughs> um, I don't want to give away the ending, but the ending clearly leaves way that we have not maybe seen the end of Daisy Jones. I hope so. Yeah. yeah I hope so. It's a very hopeful ending. I, I like what you started when we started this interview, saying you wanted to do something a little lighter and, yeah. you know, there. Yeah. And it's got that, but yeah. it's... Um, it's okay. definitely, definitely something to see. Thank you so much Thank for joining us. Thank you for having me. So nice side. to see you.